Hey guys, on this video, we are going over the various text tools in Chroma Lux. I am currently using the subscription model. All right, so here's how you start off. You go ahead and you select the letter T, which is a text tool, and you click on your screen or your artboard one time. And we are going to start off with the pre-digitized fonts, by the way. Afterwards, we are going to move on and I'm gonna show you guys how to use uh, your true type fonts which those are fonts that you download from the internet and install on your computer or come by default on your computer. Here's how you type here. I'm gonna go ahead and type the word dolphin here. I'm gonna hit apply. There's your text. Now, if you're not a fan of typing on this little box, you know, which you will get used to eventually if you're new to Chroma, but if you don't like that and you do like typing on the screen, which is fine, I'm going to go ahead and delete this. I'm going to show you how to set that up. By default, Chroma comes with the setup we just used. You will need to type on the in the box. So if you go to Tools and you go to General Options, and then you go to where it says View. Let me highlight it here. Go here, go to where it says View. Then you scroll down and see here where it says On Screen Typing? You select it, then you hit OK using my text tool again. See, now I'm writing on my screen. That's how you do that. Okay, now, Chroma comes with over 250, I believe, pre-digitized fonts with, and various you know looks and styles. Now, we're gonna go over that now, but before, I'm gonna show you this little hover option here, which is pretty handy. If you're using any particular font and you wanna know how far you can push that font, if you go here, it'll show you the available characters for that font. Does not all fonts have, you know, these characters down here, and not all of them. And it shows you the recommended height of the font if, uh, further down on the tooltip box. That's pretty handy. All right, now let me show you how to scroll through your fonts or one of the ways to scroll through your fonts. You can go here and use a slider here. These are all the fonts available in Chroma. The font lists are gonna vary depending on which version of Chroma you have. Now, if you're wondering what this little icon here in the side means, let me blow it up here. See there, you have that, that letter A. Okay, that means what the font, that, that indicates to you what the font does and it says it here after the name of the font. These are all applique fonts, all the ones with the letter A. Then with the ones with the letter V are vintage fonts. The ones with the letter M are small fonts. When you're doing small embroidery with text, you know that can get pretty tough to embroider sometimes. So you do have a quite substantial amount of pre-digitized fonts. Uh, these are your puff, your, your 3D puff fonts right here, the purple P. And then you have your monogram fonts. And then you have uh, the, red, the red or orange F. These are just your regular fonts. Now, there's other ways to look through your fonts too, not just like this. You could click once on the preview of the fonts and you get this whole catalog look. You can make it as big as you want. You can scroll to them however you want. You can use your, the wheel and your mouse. But these are all the other available fonts here. I'm gonna, you, know, you can just click on one here or double click and it should change. See? All right, that's a pretty cool tool. Now, here is where you control the height of whatever font you have. So in this particular case, uh, remember you hover over here and it'll tell you in this particular font, the biggest that could go is 0.31 to 1.57 inches in height. So let's say I wanna put it at 0.40, just type that in here, 0.40 and you hit apply. You could also just tug here and you can make a font bigger like this too visually. You hit enter and there you go. Let me show you another trick here. This right here is not a trick. This is uh, the space between letters. Let's say you want the space to be six points. So you go ahead and enter six, you hit apply and you get the, your space. Now this is for your line spacing. If we had multiple lines of text, by the way, let me show you how to do that. You could click on here with the text tool See, we have, you know, we're typing on the screen now, but you could also do it up here if you want. I'll show you both ways. You hit enter and you can, you know, continue typing down here. I'm going to hit apply. And you, you adjust your number here. See, that's how, that's how that one works. 
Now, let me show you a, another option here. This right here is the order. This will determine how it will embroider on your machine. Right now, by default, it's set up to go from left to right, and you have other options, right to left, uh, left center, and then center right. Center right is the one that most people will use to do hats, and it also works with the true type fonts too, not just the pre-digitized fonts. You hit apply. This should embroider from the center out. Let's go, let's try that here. Let's go to our playback. I'm going to use a slider here. See how it starts with the letters going from, from the center left. Now, now it's going to the right. Okay. That's great. All right. Now let's go over. I wanted to show you uh, this option here, which uh, by default, uh, this is the justification of your, of your text. Uh, by default, it will always be in the center. Now, if you want to flush right or flush left, you have your options here. Okay, now these are the ones I wanted to show you. You click here, and this is your this will control your your vertical. This will touch for this is for typing on a path. You can create your own custom monogram with whatever font you have here. This is a spiral and this is a circle. Let's let me, let's go ahead and start with the vertical. I'm gonna hit apply and it's self-explanatory now let's show you the path i'm going to hit apply okay right now you don't see anything but if you select your text tool you see how this applies here let's say you're going to work around more of an organic shape this is what this tool is used for the path this is how it works you right click on it with the text tool and you go to where it says edit baseline and then it will change to this you get the red node, which is, you know, it's red because that's where, that's where it's going to stop. And you can tug on this one right here. I know they're kind of small. Let me see if I can make it bigger so you can see it. You know, but this is what they look like right here. See? They're nodes uh, to adjust your, your path line, like in vector software. You hit enter and see it takes on th th those, those characteristics. You can also move it around with this tool here. With this one, you can make it your text bigger or smaller you can still put it in the center you hit apply and it'll it will go to the center again and if you need to further adjust this you just right click on here you go to edit baseline and you could further edit it and with these uh with these handles here you can make it go around whatever design you want it to go around hit enter there you go. Now the next one is monogram. You select it, right? And you hit apply. And the reason why it's not doing everything now, because you, you, it only works when you have three characters, right? So I'm going to go ahead and delete these three. Well, I'm going to do it up here. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and delete the last four characters and just leave these three here and then apply. You see, you see how it added it. And it works with other fonts too. If you know, you, you're not stuck with that font. I'm going to go with the army font here. Does it with this one. It does it with cursive fonts. You do have that option. If you don't want to use none of the other pre digitized monogram fonts. The next one I want to show you is called the spiral, which I rarely use this one. I don't think I've ever used this one. You hit apply. And it puts it in a spiral. You can see it because I have the, the select tool. But if you switch to your type tool, this is what it is here. And with this one, you could you know you can move your text around. With this one, you can spin it around however you want. You can make it bigger or smaller. See? That's how that one works. Now, the next one I want to show you guys, which is the one that you will be using a lot. You know, I know people like doing patches and arc text and stuff like that. The circle. Okay. So let me go ahead and bring in like a little patch design I, I made here. Pop it in here. Let's say you have a, a client. It's like a, a mall or something. And you have to do some, some, some lettering for them, some patches for them. So I'm going to go ahead here and select circle. If I hit apply now, it will only be on the top because I only have text on the top, right? See how that works? See what it did there? It made the, made, it made the arc. Now, if I want text on the bottom, you click on here on the box and you hit return on a Mac, enter or on a, on a PC, and you write whatever word you want to have on the bottom of, the, of your arc here. So in this case, I'm going to write Dolphin Mall. I'm going to hit apply. Okay, and I have it here. 
Now it's hidden behind here because this is in the foreground. Let me send this to the back really quick. Okay, now with your type tool selected, you click on this and you move it or you hover it over here like this. Now let me show you guys how to use this. This yellow one makes your text bigger. See how my I pull it up, my text, it shows your preview of my of your text getting bigger and smaller. This one right here, the the purple one, it makes the, the rings smaller. Right? So this is how you slowly adjust it. You know, you, you kind of kind of eyeball it over your, your circle and you do this right here. Like I need this, I need this text a little smaller. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna push it up here. So you're not on exactly on, on the rings itself. And there you go. I'm going to click here where it says uh, TT. That means true type. It'll show you all the fonts that are on your computer or fonts that you have downloaded to your computer. I'm going to click there one time. Okay. And it has these weird letters because those were the last ones I used when I switched them. But you click here and you can select any, any letter you want. These are Arabic letters. You can go to Arial, you hit apply, you see, and it Chroma does do a pretty good job of, of digitizing uh, true type fonts. Now, I wanted to show you one thing here. You see here where it says satin? Okay, that means that right in the satin means that it's uh they're digitized for you know it's for embroidery. But let's say you have a a, a plotter, a cutter, a vinyl cutter. And you want to do some applique letters or something, you know, because you can, if you want, Chroma has robust tools for working with vectors. You can do that if you want directly on Chroma. It's not only for digitizing thread. So you click here where it says artwork. Chroma calls vectors artworks. Okay. I'm going to hit apply. And there you go. Right now, this is a vector. Okay. I'm going to export this as an artwork. Okay. But first you have to right click and you have to hit break up text. And I believe now you could do it. Export artwork. There you go. See, and it will export it as an SVG. And then you can send it to your plotter or to cut your final, or if you want it just to have a vector shape or whatever. Now, I mentioned that Chroma does do an excellent job of digitizing most of these fonts, but sometimes you will have to edit the fonts. It will require some editing. So I'm going to go to a font here that might require some, you know, let me see this one here. You see this one here, you know, it might require some editing, you know, like this right here should be a little, little bit more straight. So, so you know, this one's okay. We need to fix this one. So I'm, I'm going to show you. So what you do is you right click and again, you break up text. This tool right here is called the shape tool. So I'm going to click on this and you see all these lines going everywhere. Let me make this a uh, white text so we can see it better. Okay. I'm clicking on my shape tool again. All right. Now we have a bunch of lines going everywhere. So I'm going to go ahead and move these up here. Let me zoom in here. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and fix like the letter M and this, you see these blue lines here. These, these are your, your split lines is the blue ones. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, delete the angle lines, delete angle line. I'm going to remove that one and this one delete angle line. And I'm going to move this one up here like so. I'm going to fix this one here a little bit like this. Fix this one. You see, now that's looking a little better. Now, you know, you, you will need to do the same to here and fix this M a little bit. It, lo it would look amazing when you're embroidering, trust me. So that's how you use all of the text tools in Chroma. If you have any questions or anything you want to know, please add it in the comments. Also hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and it was helpful to you. If you are interested in the new subscription, come check it out at chromaembroidery.com.